In this video, I want to talk about an alternative interpretation of OLS, which is the geometric interpretation of OLS. And it's a little bit abstract, but I think it actually gives some quite good intuition as to what's going on. So if we imagine we have a vector of our dependent variable observation, so let's say we have three observations of our dependent variable, y1, y2, and y3. And we can imagine these three different observations as perhaps representing different values of y for different individuals. But note that because we've written this as a vector, y1, y2, and y3, we could sort of think about drawing this as a vector in three-dimensional space. So if we imagine we have three-dimensional space, then we could represent this whole thing as a vector. So we could draw perhaps the vector y as being something like that, whereby the sort of values of y on the respective axes are y1, then we have y2, and then finally we have y3 on the sort of vertical axis here. So we can think about y as representing a vector. The problem is though that normally our y is more highly dimensional than ordinary space, so we can't actually draw it using the sort of normal spatial dimensions we have, because typically y might represent, a, let's say, a sort of 100 by one vector of observations. So we can't actually draw it using the three spatial coordinate axes. But we can still think about y as representing some sort of vector in a sort of higher order space, and we can draw it abstractly just as that. Furthermore, if we sort of think about our regression model, so our regression model is y is equal to x times beta plus u. And we can think about x here, or well, we know x is our matrix of our independent variables, and we know that we can sort of think about each of the respective columns as representing the particular space spanned by that independent variable. So typically, when we're dealing with um, OLS, the first column just contains one, because we're typically talking about uh, having a constant in our model. And then the second column might represent the value of a variable x1, so we have x11 as its first value for the first person, and then we have the second value of x1 for the second person, and then we have the third value and the fourth value respectively. And then we might have, let's say, another vector um, of observations for another variable, which I'm going to call x2. We have that for the first person, we have it for the second person, etc. And we can think about each of these respective columns as representing a particular vector space. In other words, it's a vector in space. And if we were to essentially take each of these vectors, so we take the first vector, which is just a vector of ones, take the second vector, which is a vector of the second um, independent variable, and then the third vector, which is a vector of the third independent variable, then we can sort of think about the space which spans each of these three vectors as a sort of plane, because we could sort of think about we're dealing in some higher dimensional space. And when we think about it like that, we can sort of think about what the purpose of ordinary least squares is. Because what we're trying to do in ordinary least squares is we're trying to get as close to this dependent variable y, or this dependent variable vector y, given that we don't have a vector or a space which is as highly dimensional as the dependent variable. So we can think about the fact that we're trying to get close to y even though we aren't able to exactly get there. So we can think about the space which our sort of solution's got to be in as being represented by the column space of x, which is just this thing which I've illustrated here. And the idea with least squares is that we're trying to get as close to y as possible without actually leaving this plane here, because this plane, we've got to lie on our pl this plane here because we've only got so many independent variables. But we can get as close to y as possible on the plane. And we can represent that sort of orthogonal projection of y onto the plane by a vector which I'm going to call u hat. And because essentially what least squares does is it minimizes the square distance between u and y, essentially we know that these two things are going to be orthogonal, which means that y minus u hat is going to be orthogonal to the column space of x.
So when we think about least squares in this manner, we can think about it as being composed of two steps. The first step is finding the orthogonal projection of y onto the actual space which is spanned by the independent variables. So we're finding mu hat. And then the second stage is decomposing mu hat into its various components. So it's going to have some component of the first dimension, some component of the second dimension of the independent variables, and some component of the third dimension. So we can sort of represent mu hat by being equal to x hat, or sorry, x times beta hat. And don't worry if you don't understand everything in this video. We're going to talk through a few examples in the next few videos, but I wanted to provide this as a sort of introduction to the geometric interpretation of least squares and the fact that we can think about least squares geometrically.